In this mini lesson, we will be recognizing the frequent spelling patterns for long I words. Let's go ahead and get started. Read this sentence to yourself silently, and then I will read it aloud to you. One night when I rode my bike home from school, I thought I saw a tiger behind me. Yikes! What a sentence! Let's identify the long I words from this sentence together. Which ones have that long I sound in them? As I circle them, notice the different ways these words are spelled to make that same long I sound at different parts in these words. Night, I, my, bike, I again, I again, tiger, right, behind. We are going to use page four in our spelling practice books to take our notes today. So pause the program and go get this if you don't have it already. These headers in the signs on this worksheet are all the different ways we will be exploring the long I sound in words we are familiar with. The first way to create the long I sound with words is with a final Y at the end. Like the word butterfly. The butterfly fluttered by me. What are other long I sounding words that end with a final Y? What about the word my? Think of others like the question word why. Do you notice what I underlined in all three of these words? The final Y, because that makes the long I sound. Now it's your turn. Write your own word in the blank for a final Y word that you know or can think of. Now let's investigate words with the long I sound that end in a different way with the letters I, G, H. These are words like night. Last night, I took a flight home. What about the word flight? Did anybody catch that? How is it spelled? Yes, with an I-G-H ending too. So let's add this word to our sign, flight. N now I want you to think of other words that have the long I sound with the I-G-H ending. What can you think of? They may rhyme with the word night or flight. I thought of right. Now it's your turn. Think of one more I-G-H word to finish this sign. Now let's look at the I-N-D endings on words that make up that long I sound too. How about the word mind? M I. N D. Does it have the I-N-D ending? Yes, it does. And it makes the long I-N-D I sound. So mind. What other words end this same way? I thought of blind. The blind cat walked by a kind fox. Did you hear another I-N-D word in that sentence? The blind cat walked by a kind fox. Now it's your turn. Oh, <laughs> there's, there's what we heard in the last sentence. Now it's your turn. Think of another word from this with this same sound, I-N-D ending. Okay, we have two more spelling patterns that make up the long I sounds in words from this worksheet. I at the end of a syllable is what we're going to explore next. What does that even mean, I at the end of a syllable? Let's look at a word that uses this spelling pattern and see how. This is the word silent. Silent has two syllables. Silent. What's a syllable? Let's review. Syllables are the beats inside of words. We can clap them out to help us. Let's clap out a few more syllables inside of these words to practice. Here's the word final. Final. Two beats, two syllables. Here's the word minus. Minus. Two syllables, two beats, two claps. What about a three syllable word? Bicycle. 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 
wow, we can even do it with a three syllable word. Now I want you to look at these four words that we've got in this sign. How do they all follow the spelling pattern I at the end of a syllable? Well, the long I sound in, sil in silent comes in the first syllable. The first clap out beat, watch, silent or silent. We hear the long I at the end of the syllable sigh. Same with the, the word final, final. The long I is at the end of the first syllable, final. Minus is the same way. So I'm circling silent, final, now minus, minus. Notice the my comes at the first, the end of the first syllable. All right, the last word is bicycle. Which syllable has the long I sound in it? Bicycle. Yep, it's by. Very good. Awesome work here, guys. Now for a challenge. Could you add a fifth word that follows this same pattern? I would love to see what you come up with. Okay, one more spelling pattern to tackle together. This is the I consonant E. This is a spelling pattern you are probably familiar with in words like kite and like and nice. Notice that they all have an I, then a consonant letter, and then the silent E at the end. For kite, the consonant is the T. For like, the consonant is the K. And for nice, the consonant is the C. Very good. What word might this be? It follows the same I consonant E spelling pattern. We need to fill in the long I, and then there's the F consonant, and what do we need to tack on the end? A silent E. What word is this? Yeah, it's wife. Now I want you to think of three words of your own to finish out this sign on this page. Check out the bottom of this page because for those of you who want to go above and beyond, I would like for you to try this challenge. On another paper, which I would love to be the next blank page of your writing notebook if you have it, explain in writing why these words do not follow the long I rules we've been talking about. Height, tie, by, I, guide, and child. They do not fit into the categories we discussed, so they would go into the, their own category called other. Pause the video to think through why they don't follow these rules and write a few ideas down. Now let's read this sentence, and I want you to notice the long I word in it. Wind the string into a ball. Wind would fit into the spelling pattern for the I-N-D at the end of it, but read this sentence now. Still got that W-I-N-D word in it, but it sounds differently. Listen to this sentence. The wind blew. This time we pronounce the word wind. It does not fit the long I sound because I don't hear long I in the word wind. These words, wind and wind, look exactly the same, but they sound so different. Wind the yarn, the wind blew. These words are called homographs. They have the same letters, different pronunciations, and different meanings. At the bottom of the page, it says to write sentences to show the different meanings of these homographs. This is optional, but I do want you to get familiar with the idea of homographs because we will visit these types of words again in the near future. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.